Here's a review of CRMDR terms, um, and we're going to go over some artifact terms that you might want to know for board review as well. So you guys know the difference between CR and DR. This is simply just a review of that. Um, you know that your CR is going to have the imaging plate, that photostimulable phosphor, so PSP. Okay, um, your PSP plate has to go into the reader. The reader scans it with a laser, it's going to emit that blue light. Um, and just remember, you have to process that cassette within eight hours. Why you would wait eight hours, I don't know, but just a fun fact. Okay, your image starts to fade after eight hours, just so you know. Your DR is your flat panel detector. There's going to be direct versus indirect. Um, one uses a scintillator, one doesn't. Um, so your direct uses no scintillator, it goes directly. Um, to its conversion, right? And as always, your electric um, signals are converted from analog to digital, so that's that ADC conversion. That's going to drag your memory, right? PACS, Picture Archiving and Communication System, for us, uh, we use Synapse. DICOM, Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine. Uh, your HIS is Hospital Information System for us, for our area that's, we call it CIS. Radiology inf information system is your information on your procedures. So for us, that's our RADnet. That's where your orders come through um, and your techs start and end their procedures on RADnet. And then EMR is electronic medical record. So that's all your patient information stored um, in a digital format, their history, their allergies, medications, test results, all of the above. So your digital artifacts, they may be related to image receptor issues, software or technical errors, any object on the surface of the imaging plate, it could be dust, adhesive, hair, etc. It's going to result in sort of a lighter area, so you'll see um, that on your image. It'll be the shape of the object, even if it's some dust um, on the CR plate or dust on the rollers or if there's some tape on the rollers, um, it'll come up as a light area. And then mishandling of the image receptor, um, it can result in some bending or cracks. It may cause area of dead pixels, and dead pixels, they can't display the information. So you might see a small white area that comes up, that continues to come up. Um, and for us, I don't know if anybody's noticed it, but in miscellaneous in room 5, there's a dead pixel. I see it most of the time on my lateral chest x-rays. So there's a term called dead pixel correction um, that you'll want to write down to. It assigns a value to a dead pixel. Essentially, it bases the value off of the surrounding pixels and sort of collects them together into one. A potential artifact that you could see using CR cassettes is when it doesn't erase um, completely. Sometimes you will take an exposure on a CR cassette and when you process it, you'll see sort of the remnants of other anatomy or potentially someone else's lead marker. Uh, it's sometimes called ghosting. And so it just didn't erase properly or there's potentially excessive of backscatter radiation. Um, and that deals with the lead foil backing on the plate. Artifacts uh, related to software. So there might be over compression of the image. Uh, it'll result in some of the loss of information. Technical er errors would include improper collimation um, or not being lined up. Um, you could do, you could have exposure field recognition error or your histogram won't process correctly if you're not um, centered or collimated properly. It can appear um, as too light or too dark or your image might be noisy. These are four grid errors um, that you'll probably want to know as well. Uh, the upside down grid, which I don't know how that happens, <laughs> okay, but decreased density on the sides. Um, an off level grid can happen a lot to us in sort of say our ER situations where um, you put the cassette under the patient, it's a soft stretcher, it's off level and your tube is not matching up. You'll have cut off visible over the entire image. So lateral decentering, your your central ray is not striking the center of the grid, and cutoff will be visible more on one side than the other. 
and grid focus decentering. So remember our grids have that focus distance. So if it's between 40 and 72, if you're past 72 of the focused distance, then you're going to get cut off visible on both sides. Some terms we want to review with you. Um, so exposure latitude is the range of exposures that will result in acceptable image. Um, your digital images are comprised of numerical values. Right? Um, digital images, they are comprised of rows and columns called a matrix. You guys remember this from image production, I'm sure. Um, but the matrix size is the total number of pixels in the image. The smallest component of the matrix is the pixel or pixel element. Um, and then there's a voxel, pixel density, pixel pitch, and histogram. You guys know histogram. Spatial resolution, the sharpness of the structural edges of the image. Can you see small details? Subtraction, um, you'll see the subtraction used a lot in um, interventional, right? Or if some of you guys do those, um, use the new C-arm over in Chestnut where they do the image subtraction and they remove kind of the bones and anything else out of the way so they can see what they're looking at more clearly. The contrast enhancement, um, it's altering the image. Edge enhancement, it improves the visibility of small high contrast er areas. Edge enhancement is not the edges of your image. It's the visibility of small, high contrast areas, so don't confuse those two. Um, black and white reversal, you can reverse um, black and white. Automatic rescaling, um, it's the ability to produce images consistent with brightness and contrast. Flat fielding, um, that's another processing technique to make it look more uniform and then quantization. So it's assigning a value to each pixel according to the gray shade. It's determined by its bit depth. Post-processing, well, you know the answer to that. Post-processing, it's done after it's processed, right? So window level is adjusting the brightness. Width is contrast. I only remember this <laughs> because window level, I think of my window shade and that goes up and down levels depending on how bright I want it to be. Window width, I just remember that the elephant is wider than the penguin. So window width, I remember is contrast. Lookup table, you guys remember lookup table, um, but the histogram of the levels that it's sort of expecting. Quantum model, it's when it looks grainy or noisy and just too few x-ray photons have reached the image receptor. Signal to noise ratio. Um, you always want high, right? You want less noise, more signal. Signal to me means x-ray. So how much actual x-ray versus how much noise is on your image? You don't want the noise. You want the higher quality image with the higher SNR because that means you have higher actual x-ray and less noisiness. Uh, DQE is your efficiency of your system. Um, how efficient is it to take an x-ray signal and use it for a diagnostic image? Your modulator transfer function is your ability of the system to accurately record spatial resolution and your dynamic range. Um, the receptor's ability to acquire the show's exposure. Sorry, gang, show's exposure. Clearly didn't spell check myself. <laughs> so dynamic range, what does that mean? Uh, how many techniques can I use and still get an image, right? So I can use a wider range of techniques on say a chest x-ray versus a hand x-ray. Region of interest um, is identifying a specific anatomic area on a digital imaging. So I don't know if you've seen anybody do this or use the ROI on the portable machine. Um, to try and get a better look at, um, say, a line placement or something like that. And that was it.